should be live. I'm just going to check on, make sure all the stuff's turned on, so comments roll through for everybody and everything going on tonight. But this, we've been a little neglectful the last couple of weeks. Family obligations, weddings, deer season prep. Busy. Busy, to say the least, as is everybody. So, why not? Grab this weekend off. Bonus episode. Preseason bonus episode here this mm -hmm. evening. So, whether you're checking us out on Facebook, YouTube, or after the fact on any of the podcast platforms, thank you very much for tuning in and checking it out. Uh, we are actually rigged up to check out your comments real time on our brand new studio board that you guys can't see. It's behind the camera. So we can actually look like we're looking at you guys, and Nate's not looking like he's looking over here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to read and stuff like that, so. Um, pretty, pretty neat, dude. It's pretty nice. However, the colors kind of flash a little bit, so I got to figure out how to, how to do that. Mm, that's all right to me. I don't know. So, yeah, so let us know where you guys are tuning in from. We appreciate all the support and everything like that. Um, we'll let a few people get tuned on, and... Yeah, dude, I got got high hopes, dude. Everything's feeling good. One year boards coming together. Got a few of the guys on it. Mm -hmm. We got uh, one or two guys that we don't know who they are yet. I'm trying to figure out who six pack is right off. I can't connect them to any deer I've got previous history with. I'm just kind of looking at the board from afar over here. Um, and then D hasn't shown back up over at Granny's. However. That nice nine pointer that me and dad passed did show back up. And he's looking pretty good. So, and then there's a big uh, seven pointer over there too. Big mature seven. Looks like he's at least a four or five year old. So, I think I got pictures of him from last year too. Um, the one other eight that was over there did not make it. And I just got him back from Jesse down there um, the other day. So, that was cool to be able to. Put it back together. We're trying to have Jesse come on that night, and he was supposed to bring it. So this is the deer that he forgot the other night. At eight, that was over at Grandma's. Nice eight, mid twenties probably, maybe thirties. Pretty solid buck, dude. Good broken brow. Yep, broke that brow off, and uh, other than that, pretty solid buck, dude. Bear found that one, and then I don't know burying them all. Their teeth fall out, so I got to glue in a couple of his teeth and. A bunch of his teeth off his bottom jaw are missing, so I don't know. Yeah, you didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. I don't even know how old he is, but he looked looked like he was five, six years old, dude. Judging by his tooth wear on the bottom, so yeah. But unfortunately, we can't punch a tag on every one of them. Trees and Mother Nature and trees. Yeah, cars are gonna get their trees. Friendship. Trees falling on Trees falling on them. Hurricane. I mean, dude, I saw some of the hurricane damage in the south. Leveling, dude, towns. It's crazy. I'm glad we don't deal with any of that up here. Yeah, that, uh, that was pretty wild. Yeah, it was like Main Street or some tourist town, dude. You could see the mountain in the background and, like, the trees and stuff. And the whole Main Street, all the houses, like, all the shops, everything, dude, has gone. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, I can't even imagine. Time to rebuild. Time to rebuild. But... Well, other than that, we got uh, stands are all set. You help me. Stands are good to go. Help me bang all those out on my place. You pretty much got all yours by yourself. Mm -hmm. We did a last minute looky loo walk through. Cameras are all out. Most are soaking. We do have a couple good bucks on our lease too that showed up. Yeah. So there's there's some deer around to chase, dude. It's just, um, I guess strategy going into this early season, um. Things like, um, if you do have some soybeans that are still green, not very many, because I've seen people hauling soybeans off already. That's kind of one going to be one of the main food sources I'd be looking for. Um, yeah. Oak trees, even though the oaks are a little early this year, it seems. Yeah, they're dropping early. I already, already seen that. Definitely dropping already. Yeah, you know, especially the reds. There was a whole bunch at Hobart the other day. We uh, dropped Nora off. Me and Hannah went out to dinner and dropped Nora off at my sister's place in Geneva there. And there was like six deer underneath one of the red oak trees in the middle of the quad. 
Yeah. Hanging out, eating acorns, doing a couple fawns. Townies hanging out. Yep, loving the acorns. But yeah, um, I looked at a couple of ours. I mean, most of the reds, they're all pretty much dropped out already. There's a few hanging on some of the whites, but nothing really to target. Um, a couple of our apples, though, um, key drop apples that we got in some spots when we did some, did a plot check today, me and dad did, um, on a couple of the fields, seeing how stuff's doing. Corn's looking mint. Mm -hmm. So that's going to set up money right now. It's kind of about the consistency right now of sweet corn. You know, that that's kerneled, but it's not. Harding, hardening off yet at all yeah you guys got yours in a little later than yeah it was later in um and we knew that with a shorter term corn so i'm not that worried about it um yeah. the deer deer are chewing on it pretty good right now though so it's just the deer anyway yeah no they're liking it pretty good right now um so that's good um it, it's pretty solid stand too dude i, I thought it was going to be too close but with the good growing conditions we had this year it turned out pretty good yeah um However, a lot of the wheat that I just put in, I got crap for germination on it, dude. Hmm. I wish I'd have saved out some to do a germ test on because it just is not popping, you know, in any of the fields. It's it's there and it's swole and the stuff that Dad put out is doing okay. But I don't know if the stuff that I put out just split started and then didn't have enough rain to keep making it because that was maybe two weeks ago now. I think I planted and then dad planted in the last week. Um, it's just not, not doing the greatest. So. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. All my little plots look good. Everything good with the audio, Hannah? Or are you just down grabbing stuff? Just grabbing stuff. Gotcha. But. Yeah. So. Get a little. Last card card pull for season. Um, yeah, we got a few nice bucks on camera. Working on uh, working on trying to figure out where I want to start the season. I guess with all the different um, locations I got to hunt. I have an idea of where I want to start, um, but. Just kind of narrowing down, looking through pictures, seeing where I would probably be the most successful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that. Or, I do have one spot that could just be a wild card. And I throw that out there. <laughs> and I might no, the go, the try that. The mobile spot. More or less, yeah. Yep. First week or so, I actually might just go mess around with that. Gotcha. Yeah, the mobile spot, that seems like that's got some potential. Um the least oh, it's good green out there yeah the least piece um we don't have really any food over there there's some ag and there's a hay field um we do have a couple small plots we put in over there but after the germ test that i got working upstairs i'm not expecting a lot <laughs> yeah. i don't know if that seed went through a roaster first i got to talk to the place where i bought it and see if that went through a roaster or what the reason is for the low germ or i don't know just tough to mm. say with it, but yeah, this sucks. Yeah, it does because I tried to hit it with the timely rains and waited and planted later than I typically would because we didn't have the timely rains with it, and then uh, just got crab germ on you know multiple places. I got seed for grains this year, so I don't know what's what the deal is with it. Um, so we'll see. Again, broadcast rate versus drilled rate is obviously lower germination rate. I'm I know that obviously, but just a matter of it's not Seems a little lower than what it should be oh it's way low dude i mean and it's so it's so like spotty like finicky spotty it's weird too you know there's some places you would think that it wouldn't be growing it is and vice versa and maybe it's not you know wheat that's even german in those spots maybe it's just other grasses that are kind of germinating and coming up through stuff so it could be that's tough to say but not really happy with it i gotta make a call but yeah I meant to, meant to uh, show you this before we got started, but I feel like it might be a good time to do that. It's only... I told you that was going to come on like money, dude. Oh, <laughs> it's almost knee high. 
That's the hundred proof, dude. No hundred proof right on the edge. Never did get out there to mow that. Which would have been a little nicer, but uh, at this point, dude, it's almost just let it ride, but that's just what it is. That's looking slick, dude. Yeah. Nice little field edge plot. Yep. Not getting pounded out either, dude. I'm for kind of surprised, but bigger than those beans when you took that dough early season. Still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're out there. They're on camera every day. Um, I gotta say, I'm really not getting the numbers on camera that I usually do. I don't know if that's because of all of the farm crops are still up. Um, I don't know what the honest deal is with that. But it seems like I, I usually get a, a few more on camera than what I'm getting this year, but yeah no i've noticed see i have spent a lot of time out there in the off season so maybe just needed to let her soak more, let her soak for a little while yeah. but uh yeah a couple nice bucks um definitely i would say three shooters out there one pretty consistent i wouldn't say daily i would say probably every four days every five days you get mm -hmm. pictures of them um, either late at night or it would be like just before probably like the five, five thirty mark. Just yeah. Hopping through. So early first thing. So he's bad and close yeah. somewhere. He's not too far. No. But there's so much food out there yet. It's just, it's hard to really, I mean, if you don't really have them going to your food source. Well, and everything. Every day, every other day, then it's, then it's a little difficult. Well, and then everything, dude, is so so green still. Like, we still didn't have that summer brown out, you know. So the deer are really spread out across, you know, the area. I was talking to a couple of neighbors about that. Like, we got a couple of deer that we've all been seeing or whatever. Um, You know, I went over there, caught up with a couple of them, shared some pictures with them, and talked about them and stuff like that. And, uh. We were just saying that it's almost like they're on a loop. Like they're just looping the block or maybe they only saw them once this summer or something like that. Came in, you know, popped in and then kept going. But, um, because even, you know, I haven't been as consistent, but I just think it's because the food's just so flush all across the board this year. So we'll see once crops start coming off, you know, hopefully I can get these plots turned around because I really kind of banked heavy on this cereal grain stuff panning this year and i'm just on light right now on tonnage with that we're good on the on the grain side we got a lot of corn you know we probably got five five and a half acres of corn so we're in pretty good shape with that over a couple different plots um but just not 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 the tonnage dude luckily i put some radish in with those cereal grains <laughs> so there is some good greens coming up out there in those right. plots but and obviously there's some crimson clover and stuff like that coming up in it too because I mixed in some of the leftovers from the hunter proof mix stuff um stuff that I buy extra of for you know mixing into these late late fall blends and um yeah I just I don't know I should have germed it beforehand I just took what the bag said and you know maybe I should have I usually pull a handful out it usually gets caught in your pocket when you're spreading it or whatever and I put it in a wet paper towel and germ test it and see what I get but I didn't do it with the with the wheat I threw out, and then um, so I'm curious, dude. I'm really and I'm bummed too because I hooked a lot of people up with that. So I gotta reach out to them and see if they're experiencing similar issues with it, or maybe it's just me. Well, I mean, even for like the garden situation, I heard a lot of people are having problems with their beans. I don't know if it was just the seeds we got this year or what the deal was. Like even huh. some of the farmers are telling me they were just getting yellow spots way too early. Hmm. with their beans and then us trying to grow beans in our garden was kind of a struggle i think we replanted them three or eliza did about three times before we actually got something to really work i mean these are store-bought bean seeds or yeah just kind of coming up looking a little anemic or something or yeah they just didn't <laughs> they just they'd start and then they would just die i don't know hmm. i mean we we fertilized everything we 
We kept it watered. I mean, we didn't really have to keep it watered. It was, you know, it rained every other day for how long? Yeah. And sometimes you can get too much water on stuff, but, yeah. you know, it shouldn't be, you know, we're not getting, like, downpour type stuff on our pot, plots. So, like, and the radish is still there and doing great, and so is the crimson. So it's, in you know, it's like it doesn't matter. And actually, it worked out pretty good. It was kind of a nice learning thing for me, too, is I put all the wheat in the hopper for the four-wheeler because I wasn't spreading, like, 500 pounds of wheat by hand to a shoulder spreader because I've done that before, and it's not fun. So I put it in the 50. walking. Yeah, it's a lot of walking. So I put it on the 50-pound hopper, and then before I start, I sprinkle the radish over the top and mm-hmm. the crimson clover right in the top of it, and as you're driving with the wheeler, it kind of shakes itself down because it's smaller. Yeah. And comes through. So you get makes sense. you get a little spotty distribution with your with your radish and stuff like that. You know, they'll get some spots where it's a little thick, but then there's other spots where it's a little thin. But it's pretty decently uniform. I was surprised uh, how that worked out. Um you know, so Yeah, we'll see. Hey, it is what it is at this point. Season's on us and we're about to have some fun. Yeah. Have some real fun. The work's behind us. It's about having fun now. Yep. So looking it's at that. It's about sitting, putting some stand time in. It's about camaraderie with the boys and girls, whoever yep. you hunt with. And uh, chasing that chasing that dream. That yeah. next one, dude. Chasing that next so one. The nice thing is, is I'm we, excited. we do have that front coming. I know. Open this this coming week's actually looking really good for the first week of October. Yeah. You hit that Thursday, I think it is. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Even like Sunday morning, dude, they're talking maybe 44 degrees. Mm-hmm. That's a little early. Dude, that's like early, early for yeah, morning. Yeah, we're just going moving. Yeah. But I mean, afternoon food source. You got good food source. After the rain on Friday night, Saturday could be good. You can see a lot of deer going down Saturday, Sunday, especially if you got, like I said, green beans still that they're still hitting or beans that still got some regular, you know, regular colored leaves to them and aren't browning out yet. Um, apple mast, oak flats, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that could be really, really hot for you this first week. Um, alfalfa fields, you know, corner green fields and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I wouldn't say that I'd be switching over to hunting corn and that kind of stuff yet. They're not carb loading yet, but, you know, unless it's fresh cut corn. And then maybe I might go out there if it was combine corn. Chopped maybe. corn, there's nothing left. Yeah, well, chopped corn, I mean, if you're within a week of them chopping it, you you probably get some activity out there. But it, it never lasts long when it's chopped corn. I've seen more on the combine side that they hit it longer. Yeah, I think there's more spillage in the field than the chop. When it's actually shelled. Yep. There's picking, shelling, and chopping corn. I learned this. So there's there's three different ways to harvest your corn. I'm not a farmer, so please. So please obviously me. chopping is for silage. Mm-hmm. Shelling is what most of the farmers do nowadays. They go out and they harvest the ear. And it shells the ear and just takes the grain off the of kernels, it, the yeah. kernels off of it. Picking is actually when you saw the old, some farmers still do it, not many, a lot of small farms maybe. When you see the old corn bins with the full ears mm-hmm. in the bin, gotcha. that's actually picking. Gotcha. So there's three different ways that farmers harvest it. And maybe farmers around you do things different. But that's those are the three ways I know that they do it. Yeah, so I mean, primarily the bigger farms are combining and chopping. Yeah, yeah. Most no, farms nowadays nobody's nobody's they're, they're picking for the most yeah, part. They're shelling and and uh, and chopping. But you know, there still are places out there that and maybe if you're Amish or out there hand picking, I don't know. Yeah, they might be hand picking out there with the sickle. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Um, that uh, I am curious. I, I'm, I'm super excited to talk about my early season hunt. You guys, I'm sure, saw the post. Mm-hmm. So, if Ben's all right. I kind of just want to dive into that. Let's do it. All right. First blood. My first blood took one down uh, September 14th, right? It was open in day of. Sounds right. Yeah. I actually got him on the 13th. No, I'm just kidding. It was actually the 14th. And, uh, was planning it with Eliza and Owen for a couple weeks prior. Um, probably saw the post of me getting the hunting clothes out, washed and ready. 
drying out on my front porch. Um, and it, I, I honestly, it honestly couldn't have worked out really any better than what it did. Um, we got out there probably, because I knew Owen wasn't going to last long, patience-wise. Yeah. Like, I was, I was figuring we could probably keep him entertained or quiet for about an hour. So I was like, all right, we got to push it a little bit. I don't want to get out there an hour before because they're probably already going to be out in the field. So we got out there about two hours before sunset. It was about 5.30, 5.00, 5.30. And uh, we climb up in uh, my little tower blind. And all three of us got in there. It was 80 freaking degrees. If you saw the picture, I was sweating. We sat in there, and uh, sitting there, and Owen was doing good. We were kind of, you know, pointing out squirrels and stuff to him and trying to get him to whisper. And when you have a two-year-old, how does that work for you? <laughs> he does it when you tell him to, then the next word that comes out is very loud. You don't want to save this for the episode? I was thinking maybe, I don't know. We got this and we got the... Which one? Nah, we'll, we'll just do the... We'll do... Or yeah. not. Yeah, we play it. Might as well. You pulled it up. So, before you, you play the actual... Yeah, no, we'll or whatever. I was just getting it lined up. Yeah, get her lined up. Um, We're in the blind for about an hour. Um... Owen's kind of, he's making all sorts of noise. And I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm like, the only way this is going to work is if those deer come out like 100 to 150 yards um, to the south in that, in that bean field. Mm -hmm. Which I was kind of expecting them to, but at the same time I wasn't because there wasn't really a whole lot of green out there. So I wasn't really sure where they were going to pop out. But uh, Liza picked them out and they were... They were a ways out there. This doe and uh, two yearlings, it looked like, came out. Um, and they started working with it. And they worked their way back into the, the thick stuff there, the goldenrod and all the brush. And um, I'm like, all right. You know, we didn't spook them. They went back in. I said, you know, we still got time. And Owen started really talking. <laughs> and we're like, all right, buddy, you gotta be quiet. I'm like, shh, you know, shh, you gotta be quiet. You know, we're, we're deer hunting. You gotta whisper. So, what we ended up doing was putting a little Mickey Mouse clubhouse on the phone to try and calm him down for the last hour. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And the deer started coming out again. Um, we saw some turkeys. And you'll see all this in the video. Um, it was very hard for, with all of us in the blind, for me to do the video and uh, with all of us in there. There's no room. Yeah. Like, we were packed in there. So, I told Liza, I said, if this is going to happen, I said, you got to run the camera. So, the video is not the greatest. And the deer was probably about 120 yards away, 130 with a cell phone so forgive us for that but uh i think it dude i think it came out freaking solid not bad it's not bad it was just like you know she was trying to juggle owen and film with her left hand and like trying to like cover his ear a little mm -hmm. bit because he will not wear earmuffs as soon as you put them on he'll just rip them off and throw them yeah so, uh yeah um you know liza did the best she good could and she did a good job and uh we were able to get it done so uh here's uh here's uh here's when we decided i was gonna we were gonna shoot one see if i can do and, this. uh ended up working out great honestly there we go you got volume you gotta turn the volume on the volume will be on you can see the turkey out there there's a doe and Honestly, that fawn that was with that doe, she it still had full spots that fawn, so I wasn't I wasn't even gonna attempt that one. But you can see her out there. 
Oh, we're getting a little frustrated. Yeah, Liza. Liza trying to control him and video. Mm -hmm. Again, dude, phone video from what, a hundred and about a buck thirty, you said? Yeah, about a buck thirty. Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> <Daddy. laughs> yeah. I'm sure that turkey was looking right at it. The turkey was only like 40. There's a shot. There goes the turkey. There goes the deer. There goes the deer I shot running in <laughs> back where she came from. And then the other one's not knowing where the heck that came from. No, that one's all confused when they had the real little one yeah. with her. But uh, there was a total of five deer out in the field. Um, that video will be on our season one that we're putting together that video and a few other ones will collab together to kind of give you the full hunt but uh yeah i don't know could you pull the picture up uh did i send you the picture of all of us with the doe yeah i can send, that's on my phone he texted that one over to me I but uh so being somewhat new to this filming thing and i filmed a few of my bow hunts before and trying to juggle Owen and everything, I guess I wasn't fully thinking when we went out there to track it. So I went out there and we're trying to find blood out in the field. We did find where I shot her. Found a little bit of blood around that area. And I thought where she ran in was a little farther to the south. But where she actually ran in was actually, she actually ran at quite an angle kind of towards the blind when she went back in. When we ended up finding her, actually, Eliza ended up finding her. Eliza kind of, you know, last ditch effort to kind of do like a, a little bit of a loop. And uh, she ended up, her and Owen ended up finding her. I got this one. It, yeah, that not work. The other one's with you guys on the... Um, At the processor. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, before I, well, that was another thing I was going to talk about. It was before I actually went out. I knew I wasn't going to have time to cut this deer up in time. So I called a bunch of, or contacted a bunch of local processors to actually make sure that someone was going to be open that I could bring this deer to. Yeah. And uh, that night, and at least get it in a cooler. And uh, a local one was going to be, so that worked out well. But it took us a little while to find some blood. And, uh, but there's Owe. He was, uh, he... He was great. He was uh, honestly in the blind. He was he was a little stir crazy. Obviously, two year old. He wants to move. He wants to do things. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge. But when we were trying to track the deer, and he was out there, he was a trooper. When we found the deer, he was all excited. He was talking about the blood on the leaves, and he was talking about the blood on the deer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he watched. He watched me gut it. We were going to see how he was going to handle that. And uh, he did good. He, he, his mom held him, and I gutted, the, gutted her. And it was funny. I got, I got to the point where I kind of rolled the stomach out, and I grabbed some intestines, and I was pulling them out. And he saw the intestines, and he starts going, snake, snake. I was like, yeah, not really. He's like, yeah, it looks like a snake. I was like, but there's not a snake in there. So those are the or intestines. Yep. But uh he handled the whole thing well. I kind of feel a little bad for him because uh I was hoping to be able to find that deer a little faster. The mosquitoes got to him. He had a few mosquito bites. Yep. The next day, but yeah. He survived. Toughened him up a little bit, I guess. But yeah, dude. But uh yeah, that was uh it was a successful successful evening. I would dare say. The plan uh, came together. Gotcha. So, I was pretty pumped about that. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you, dude. I got the got the text from you. I forget where the heck I was. I was out somewhere. I didn't get out for the early arch, or early dose season. Um, well, we don't usually hunt it. I yeah. just went out because I wanted to get Owen out there. Right. And not have to worry about bundling them up and getting cold and... You know, all the above yeah. that, too. And it's it's a lot harder to take a two-year-old out in bow season. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a little easier to get it done with a rifle. Yep. That's true. <laughs> That's definitely true. But yeah, no, we were out today. Like I said, we went to the farm and um, looked, drove around. Hannah had a cookie decorating class with a couple of her aunts and stuff like that at Smoke It Tales. They had an event today. And um, so I was on dad duty this afternoon and we went to the farm because I was going to drop my mom off her pumpkins that we got the other day at the pumpkin patch because mm -hmm. she didn't have a place to take them because they were all muddy. So they were riding in the back of the truck. So I was like, oh, I'm in smoking tails. I'll just drive the rest of the way to Lions and drop off the pumpkins. So we get there, and of course, you know, dad and mom, you know, start talking about the baby, and dad's talking about all the seed he got out, where he got it, and went through the whole list with me. And I said, yeah, it sounds perfect. We went out there, did a quick drive around, see if we got to revamp anything. And um, like I said, the, the stuff he threw out, it's German good. Um, we get a good, I have no issues with, cause he planted, planted some late hundred proof mix that I had, that I found a couple containers of it in the garage. And he's like, he's like, I'll just throw it out there. I was like, yeah, I said, I don't resell, I don't resell my old seeds. So Let's see what happens. I'm not that seed place or a seed person that, you know, it's some good germ on it. Oh, it germed great. It looks, it looks like a haze of green. Nice. Um, we planted a little heavier because we're not going to get. We're not looking for that spacing, so we planted a little heavier, trying to fill out tonnage rather than, you know, allow for the space to get big. Kind of like we were talking about at the fields we were looking at at that client piece the other day, mm -hmm. where the stuff was planted too thick now, and it's getting a little yellow because it's running out of room to grow. Yeah. Versus the other stuff, which is really taking off now because it's got space. So same idea there is, but we're putting it in tighter because we have a shorter growing window. I'm hoping to get... If I can get 45 days, I hope I don't go that long without a frost. I'd like to have a nice frost in late October. But if I can get 30 days out of it and get a good, you know, 8, 9 inches of good green leafy growth out of the brassicas in that mix, mm -hmm. I'll take that. I would definitely, you know, take that for the for the thing. I'm not, I know I'm not going to get bulb production, but I'm not worried about that. We got the grains uh, from the corn and stuff this year that we'll be able to, you know, knock down for them to to get at this winter um and then i have a plan to do quite a bit of tsi cutting uh in some of the old orchard sections and stuff like that too planned this year so i'm um, not really worried about the food on that side of it for postseason stuff but um yeah we'll see hopefully we can get get some damn cereal grains to germinate you know at this point i'm looking at thinking about throwing down another 100 to 150 pounds an acre of rye if i can find some that actually you know will germ out good for me because mm -hmm. like i said i'm not i'm not happy with the way it germed everything else has been great the the brassicas have been great um the radishes all that's been great um crimson clover all that's turning out good uh the spring mix is ready for frost seeding you know if anybody wants to get it in in the fall you can get it out now but it's set up for frost seeding into your brassica plots your cornfield stuff like that that's all mm -hmm. february yep february march that's all containered um starting to container that up now i got the mix where, where i want it i'm gonna do a spring mix um and a uh and a spring mix with chicory so you can choose to have chicory in your mix or not with your clover. I got basically two different spring mixes. So you got spring mix and then spring mix with chick. I don't know if I'm going to call it like summer chick or something like that. I don't know. Summer chick. I don't know. Hot, spring hot, chick. Spring chicken. Spring chick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got spring mix and spring chick. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah. yeah Filet and red robin. Yeah, I'd go to that. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, we got that. We got a mix of perennials, biennials, and then one annual clover in there for the for the clover mixes and stuff like that. Um, but that's that's all ready for frost seeding. I uh, wasn't going to try to get on it this year, but everything just got too busy to be able to sell some this fall. But you're welcome to purchase now and uh, get it for the spring. And uh, that way I can start to recoup some of my seed investment money. That'd be nice. Yeah. But anyway, and if not, I got a whole bunch of clover seed for the next 10 years. I wanted to buy clover seed. You about that spring mix I experimented with. Uh, that field, dude. That whole field is red tops. 
Oh, and there's some nice perennial coming up. Wow, and he's browned the... off now, but there's still some pinkish, reddish tops out there yep, right now. That's a different... Just because I didn't get out there and mow it yep. when I wanted to. But there's a lot of nice ladino. Weeks ago. There's a lot of nice ladino out there. Oh, yeah. And then the grasses. Then... He'll eat the grasses. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that 100 proof I planted on the edge is probably knee high. Yeah, that's hitting stride it's, money, dude. It's about... <laughs> It's about like that tall yeah. right now. And I did pull some back and seeing if I could see any little ball. I'm sure there's little bulbs growing under there by now. If it's knee high, I would say probably your golf ball to baseball at this point. I didn't want to spend too much time out there. Unless you got radish. I mean, your radishes, dude, if you pull, if you got radishes that are probably closing in on a knee high for your, your vertical growth, I tell people radish, at least figure almost three quarters the, uh... of is underground too. The uh, outlaw plot I planted in that same field that um, you guys just saw. Mm -hmm. My stuff's eight inches tall. It's the whole thing. It's green. Like, when they harvest the, <laughs> when they harvest the beans, I'm going to lose it all, I think. Because it's just, it's about six to eight inches tall. Yeah, it depends. That whole on... corner. I, I was like, well, it depends. I'm like, that's going to be money. I don't think Steve has a flex header, does he? I don't know. I mean, if you got a flex header, no. Rotating beam no, if you got a flex head, it cuts way closer. I don't know. If he's, you got, he usually has about, I don't know, good four or five inches. Yeah, they're probably six inch stems, maybe six fine. inch stems. They could be fine. I mean, if he nips, nips the top of tops of them off, and if the weather isn't too rough, I think they might come back, bounce a bit. But yeah. honestly, I think I'm probably gonna get some the north, the north one I did. I. Kind of looked at it, but like I said, I didn't want to spend too much time out there. Yep, let it soak up. I had my hunting lower stuff on to try and minimize scent, I guess. But uh, the the north one, I don't, I don't, I don't think did as well. But there was a lot more spacing, and there's a lot more deer slash woodchuck damage, groundhog damage in the north on that. Uh, no. On the, the, on the south, which yeah. opened up pockets for the the uh, hundred feet to go in the outlaw plot mm -hmm. plot to actually get some sun and it actually took off. But I honestly might get some bulb growth over there, which is going to be money for gun season. That's what if it lines up right. Dude, if you have those nice golf ball turnips in outlaw plots, when the beans come off, those are dynamite. And that's gonna be that. That's that's dynamite. If you that's can get that, if you can get that golf ball size, which is what we were talking about on the show. So if you guys have been following along with these tips that we've been doing, like our real time stuff, like our sit alerts and like our real time tips, like get out there and do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You'd be sitting there right now, going in October one with potentially, you know, probably their quarter size right now. But by you know prime time, they're gonna be golf ball, maybe a little bit better in an outlaw plot. Mm -hmm. A bunch of little, what can, you, what can you? It's just a bunch of little sugar candies out there. Think of it as a bunch of little, you know, if you were to walk into a candy store, you, that's what it is to a deer. But you gotta, the time is you gotta, you have to have those bulbs at a certain point. That's why you plant them, the, the brassicas and the turnips and the radishes. That's why you plant them in that mid August range, is because at that time when they get to a certain um point in their growth is when they're the most sweetest they're the most desirable to they're deer. not woody they're if, not, you, yeah. if you have let's say um because not it happens to everybody if you if you don't just completely till up your plot every year and replant it you're going to get regrowth your volunteer volunteer stuff. stuff and that volunteer stuff that's been growing all spring and all summer it's just like wood yeah by the time you're hunting it and if then if you're looking at those bulbs that are this big yeah, the deer will just shoot a little bit off or those, the side. Or those uh, turnips that are sticking out of the ground. About you can see them; they're about I don't know, about as big as round as a baseball bat, and they're about that tall. Until it's radish stuff. It's because they've been in there all mm -hmm. summer, and at that point, this just it's no different than gnawing on the bark of a tree. It don't taste good. Yeah. And then people were like, "Whoa, they got these huge radishes, but nothing's eating them." Well, it's because. The sugar, the desirableness, the sweetness, the tenderness of them is all yeah, gone. The, pal the palatability side of it. You want to line that palat palatability up with your 
hunting time. Mm-hmm. And that's why things these things get planted at a certain time. Yeah. And I know a lot of folks, like I was talking to a guy who does a lot of food plots um, down in the southern tier, and he likes planting earlier because his idea is he wants more tonnage. And in an area where there's not extra ag crops and stuff like that, he wants a longer-term growth because he wants more bulb tonnage. Now, he'll have fields cleaned out of, like, I would say, sub-volleyball size brassica tubers and stuff like that, but clean out the fields. Again, smaller fields, you know, there's different applications for it, but if you're ag country or you have a lot of good, desirable food in your neighborhood where you're planting these food plots, I really like that mid-August range. Um, And that very recently, like we talked about with the rain and conditions, but I like that mid-August, like Nate says, they're super, they're where a deer can pick it up in his mouth and sit there and and chew it and chew it and the size are smaller yep and it's not all tough and woody like it's been growing there for an extra month or whatever if you're planting like mid to end of july and you don't have to deal with as much droughty conditions typically you know that you would be dealing with in that july time too so that's kind of why we've always and we planted right on labor day we planted brassicas on labor day more forage brassicas so we get you know leafy stuff um but we really missed that timing this year because of planting other fields, trying to get our stands trimmed out, stuff like that. So we didn't plant then, and we weren't planning on putting brassicas in this year. And then we never got the rain anyway. Cereal grains went in late, and then cereal grains didn't germinate worth the damn. So now it's not too late still if you have a plot that's struggling or whatever. Um, just make sure your cereal grain is going to germ out for you. And, and spot seeding. Do some spot seeding with cereal rye winter wheat, whatever you want to put out there for your grain. I would love to drill it in. I'm trying to talk Honestly, you can take a kind of bringing a drill over and just drilling in and see you know, with it. Honestly, what I, I think, maybe you'll disagree with this, but I, I honestly think you could probably still throw some hunter proof out there. You're not gonna you're probably not gonna get bulb germination unless we're like seventy degrees into November. You're gonna get green. But you're still gonna get the green tops. I'd go heavy. Yeah, I'd go heavy with it. Yeah, it would still work if you're yeah. just looking for green forage. I don't have any hunter proof left, but I do have some purple top the turnip. Brassicas. I do some purple top turnip left and some. I mean, right now, Definitely. you can even throw some clover out there. It's going to probably pop. Medium red or crimson? Yeah. yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's going to pop, but it's not going to go to its full potential before. Yeah, if you went with, a, went with a younger, not a younger, but like a more annual or perennial clover, um, definitely would be a good one to utilize at this point for a late a late plant and then to complement that with cereal grain you could complement it i would say tillage radish if you can but even some purple top and maybe i'll do that maybe i'll just go out in those fields that are super lean you know because i don't know what this next batch of cereal grain is going to do um well, i got i got another seven eight pounds i think of purple top right now well what's the weather going to do i mean yeah tuesday the, the 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 first week's looking a little cooler but yeah. No, the weeks after that, we might be back up in the 70s for a month. Yeah, I'm not worried about the times, dude. I mean, you got to have, when we when we say frost, when I say frost to kill this stuff, I got to have it, you got to have it down in the 20s to really shut this stuff down, like a good killing frost. Yeah. Like, And the way the years have been, the past few years, I, you, think, I, think, you, I think you can get away with it. I think we can get away with it, but I think we're due, too. I think we're due for that good, Um, but yeah, I think we got rain. Tuesday into Wednesday is what it's... Let me look for lines. I'm also looking at the weather fronts here. This would be a good topic. Um, Tuesday into Wednesday, it looks like. We got 75% chance of rain, tenth of an inch or so. And then Friday, Saturday, another batch. So I'm probably going to try to get seed out, at least seed over to Dad, so Dad can get the seed out. Um, if I can't do it for whatever reason, probably either tomorrow or Tuesday. That way we can get it out before that rain shower Tuesday night. Um, whatever we decide to go with it can line up. Um, I'd like to throw probably 100 to 150 pounds of rye at it and then, you know, half a pound, pound of turnips at it as well. You know, like you said, use it up, dude. Like I said, any seed that I buy, um, the clover I'll disclose if if it's I have extra next year. Um, I'll disclose that it's two-year-old clover seed and I'll re-germ it and see what the germ rate will be after that but mm-hmm. like the brassicas and stuff like that i don't hold that seed extra or that's the stuff that gets put in my plots and that still germs fine but 
for whatever reason, the wheat and rye, dude, this year, I just had crap luck with it. Hmm. I should reach out to everybody else, because I know quite a few people got some from me. So I'm wondering if they had the same conditions, or maybe maybe I had a pest issue, dude, because I'm not out there checking my pots every day either. Yeah. And I didn't look at it, because I've seen that in other areas where if you have, like, an intense flood condition, it's not really a pest issue, but you had an intense flood condition come through, like, your plot could be great, but if you had standing water in your field for more than a day, especially those young plants, they could all be dead. Now, we haven't had a condition like that, but um, I know in the south they deal with pests like army worms um, and some other insects and stuff like that that can come in and wipe out plots in a day. Not saying that's what I'm dealing with, but I guess you never know. But yeah. And again, the longer it sits out there without germinating, the longer turkeys can eat it. Songbirds can eat it. I mean, you get a whole flock of starlings or whatever comes through, they clean up a bunch of wheat pretty freaking quick. Yeah. So I don't know. I tried. I tried getting a hold of Connor. I'm like, Connor, what, what, what would it be to come over and drill like five acres of cereal grains for me? Because his stuff that we drilled, it's green. It's a freaking carpet, dude. It looks money. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sure it does. But I was like, yeah. I would love to drill it, but I don't know if I'll be able to line up drilling it. I might just be poor man broadcasting it, like I've always done. Well, it is what it is. Like it's I, I can't let it go off. Crunch time's crunch time's over, Don. Crunch time's not over, Nate. It's over. It's not it's over. It's time to hunt. I came back from my uh from my honeymoon and planted a clover plot with dad <laughs> three three years ago. It's time to hunt now. It's not time to hunt yet. I tell you what. It's man. coming up. In about 24 hours. Pretty close. Pretty close. Was it Tuesday? You're going to be wanting to be in the stand instead Tuesday. of out there spreading seed. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Well, today's Sunday. About 36 hours. All right, whatever. Hold on a day. That's what I'm saying. One last day. The viewers knew what I was seeing. Except for, dude, I have been seeing Jefferson County, Lewis County, Northern Zone guys. There have been a couple guys getting it done with the bow. Already, for the early archery that they got in the northern zone. Yeah. Especially this first week. Oh, yeah. With those temperature. The little drops. Yeah, those little 40 degree. This? Yeah. yeah. Tell me. I'm, I'm going to be. Honestly, dude, I'm looking at that Saturday, Sunday. That's looking pretty nice. Other than. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out this week, but definitely this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking, dude, lows that might be mid to lower 40s for the first week of october buddy mm-hmm there's some good there's some good good potential stuff in there you never know i can't believe we had anybody comment unless we would just have riveting conversation today. it's sunday everyone's watching football eating dinner yeah we've had a few people tuning in a few people well, check the other pages i am i thought i saw austin chime in on one austin well Mm -mm. No, I had a guy message me about some cereal grain. Doesn't have any. I should ask Steve. Maybe Steve, Steve got any cereal grain kicking around, maybe? Mm -hmm. Might be worth asking. Maybe Steve's got some. I'll give Steve a call after this, after we get off the air. Sam says, I'm listening. Thank you, Sam. It's because we're not giving away cameras tonight. Nobody wants to comment. Yeah, they only want the free shit. Which, actually, dude, nobody got... Well, I take that back. Caleb came and got his. Caleb got his cameras? Caleb on cameras? No, Nate, my mower Caleb. Oh. Um. Bear opens Tuesday, Dan says. Dan Fessa. The man. Is the, man, uh, the legend. He said it to camp. Mm-hmm. What I got here. That a boy, Dan. Oak Flat. They got to have an Oak Flat down there. I don't know. Or nearby. He's got his, uh, I don't up his sleeve. I just know his neighbor buried me. But Dan was going to knock out my lights at the chicken barbecue that day. Oh, man. He's getting a little aggressive then. No. I'll just, just I'll joke it aside with it. Dan was like, so I heard you work for my neighbor. I forget how he said it. Laying out his piece, taking all my deer away or something like that. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> my co-worker lives like 
the next road or two over from them, and that's what I was talking to you about or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this is where the telephone game gets going, where Nate was like, oh, yeah, Ben's co-worker. And then next thing you know, it's Jesse hears, Ben worked for this guy over there next to you. But, but no. No, I'd like to get down there to camp sometime and check that out down there. I heard it's a pretty sweet place. You've been down there a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, we might do another. I don't know. Jesse was talking about. We'll see how the year goes. Yep. That's region nine, right? Or is that eight still? Might still be eight. Down near Naples. Yeah. But yeah, Sam's listening, so thank you, Sam. See, we just gotta say comment. Everybody comments. Yeah. So all the all the regulars, Sam. Ginger snap. The Dilf says next year plant ginger snaps. It really draws them in. Hmm. Ginger snaps. Like, like cookies? Yeah. Plant cookies. Throw some cookies out there. For bears? For bears? <laughs> for bear or deer? For bear, I heard, uh, just go to, like, a, the little Debbie truck. I heard just just your out in the middle of the woods and you'd be fine. Bear grease and yeah. marshmallows. Light a little campfire, maybe. You know. But, yeah. Um, Some bacon grease. Just start dumping it over a stump. You'd be all right. Yeah, I heard Jerry's been out. They've been having a good time at all the... All the hunts they've been on lately. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, things. Jerry dumped a buffalo. That's a good point. Breaking news coming in from my mom and dad tuning in. Reminder, this year's DMP first round will end tomorrow. So if you haven't got your doe tags yet, go get your doe tags for the first round. Ooh. Good, good topic. Good, good comment. I'm going to put that one on the screen. Remind everybody for that one. So, yeah, make sure if you haven't got your doe tags to get your doe tags and make sure you get applying for the right Terry's area. top of it, man. Yep. Mom and dad tuning in. Tuning in. But a side by side is nice. We can put mom, dad, had me. Did I show you that picture before Stra- we started? Strap Nora in the back. No, we strapped her to the, uh, to my mom. She's like, the baby harness, oh. chest harness, because we didn't have a place like when well, you, me, and Owen and Nora on the side by side. We put Nora in the middle, buckle her in. You put Owen on your lap, and we just putt slow. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have that because it was me, mom, and dad, and Nora. So we piled in there like we were going cross country road tripping. There they go. Brian is always smiling. He is probably the happiest guy I have ever met in my life. I think they look alike. Nora, Nora, she's so cute. Oh man, we had her headphones on because our uh, the side by side we got is a little bit louder than some of the other ones because it's older. Mm-hmm. Man, um, it works. It works, dude. It's a yeah. Get one of them. It's a lightly used charm for sure. Uh, it's a good good one, Jerry. For upcoming events, handgun class at the Newark Rod and Gun Club next week on the full 18-hour course. Is it filled up already? Yeah, you need to get your pistol minutes? permit open. You need to get your pistol permit. You do need to get it. Except for it's the first weekend of deer season. Might have to do an after deer season one. They got one after deer season, Jerry. It's poor planning. That is very poor planning. <laughs> We're just busting. Might have been when they had a person come in for it. But I wanted to share this picture. Just Jerry, because. just go take it for me. Sign all the papers for me. And then, uh... He is an honest man. I know he is. Oh, speaking of that, I just saw this on Facebook, so it reminded me. I got, like, a bunch of chestnuts this year to start. I was inspired by, uh, Sleeman giving us those, uh, chestnut trees. I was like, I'm just gonna put these all over my farm. Like, just start plugging them in everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I got, oh, uh, eight pounds, nine pounds. That I grabbed up to somebody off of Facebook that I saw posted them. Float tested them. Only had a handful that didn't float test out of, like, the eight pounds. So I got, I don't know, a couple hundred of them to put into pots this year. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put some, some chestnuts together. And we've had good luck with chestnuts. All right, let me get this. Get this going. Oh, Sam says check out Rochester Defense. They do a great class on pistol permits as well. Definitely. Oh, and speaking of 
Sleeman and those guys. This Wednesday, I don't know if you said you said you might not be able to make it down or whatever. Um, I'm at blood trail. <laughs> they like, ain't got time. Ain't got time for that. Um, Wednesday, the guys from uh, Just Hunt Club come back down. Uh, Mr. Sleeman and Mr. Hansen will be stopping by again um, down here for the show. So that'll be a good time. Um, so, yeah, that'll be going on. There we go. I'll dial it up. Look at that. Very nice. That is a nice family photo. I should have whistled. I had my mom look too. But you see me, mom, dad, and Nugget. I'm sure my dad's going to be all upset that I put his picture on the internet. It's gone. We got up. Oh, now we're flashing up. Nah, it's just the, the interface going back and forth off the TV. The internet just blew up Brian's yeah. face. Man. <laughs> On viral. Uh, Jerry says, we'll supply lunch. Buffalo Sloppy Joe's. Yummy. You, you, Jerry, you didn't ask. Is it full or is it not? Yeah, Nate, Nate, Nate might be tagged out by then. He might be able to make it. I'm not going to be serious. <laughs> wow. Hey, man. It's possible. If you're out there. If you're out there, it's possible. I got a couple vacation days yet. Yep. Right. I'm still waiting for that cold that that big cold front, dude. And it's it's gonna come this year. And one year rule we'll line up on them. If I wasn't chasing a mature buck, I could be tagged out by it. Yeah. It's, it's right on, dude. It's you know <laughs> Jerry says go to the website and check. So go over the Newark Rod and Gun. Uh club website and see if there's any availabilities if anybody's interested in that and then next week we'll have the guys from just hunt club on and then the next episode will be during deer season for us mm -hmm. so uh number one tip to somebody for the early season nate or it could be a, a couple tips what's your what's your advice going into that first week or two weeks of season My advice is if you don't have anything consistent on camera of what you're looking for, if you're targeting a specific buck, um, just kind of hunt the outskirts, um, smack a doe if it comes up, if you feel the urge to do that. But if you're, if you're chasing a trophy, I would just hunt the outskirts. I wouldn't really dive in and be stomping through, uh, putting too much pressure on your property just yet. Yeah, I think, and I would definitely stick to a little more green. Yeah, green food source. Yeah, definitely food, um, because they're still slotting in, dude. I mean, I'm still seeing bucks running together in groups. Yeah, um, I mean, it was, I think it was, I had a picture last night, three bucks walking through all together, no does with them. Yep. So, um, I think, and they're, I think they're just starting to really kind of hit scrapes. Oh, dude, they were tore up today. Yeah, like, they're just... And this week, After this, this, this rain coming is cool. October, this first week of October, those cool temperatures, there you can see them scrapes getting ripped up. I would say that's another... If we get, like, those rains that we're talking about, after that rain, that's another early season spot that I found have a lot of success on, is adjacent to those food sources, that oak flat, those apple trees, the green beans hayfield stuff like that that scrape line going to and from that from bedding Beautiful. can be a can be a dynamite spot inside corners can be killer at that time of the year for an evening food post up where all the deer get past you and go out to that food source at night you can get off um again afternoon spots typically morning i'm not going to probably punch in for a morning don't hunt mornings yet you're going to blow your shit up yeah i mean don't unless you're unless you have something dialed in like a buck you want to kill is going through there at six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. Don't hunt morning. And I would say if you're doing that, it's observation. Yeah, observational sets. You know, is something you can do if you want to get out to the morning spot. Um, after a rain, where it might take him longer coming back to bed because he's freshening up a lot of scrapes after that rain. You know, hitting that stuff where he's going to be getting to his bed an extra half hour, hour later than he might have. 
if you got his bed pinned down, you know, if you're getting super aggressive on him. But that's like you're moving in and you're going all or not. You know what I mean? You're not going to go picking around that spot anymore. You got him figured. You got him picked. You're going to slip back in on his bed gonna, in that morning. You're going to do more harm hunting mornings right now than yeah. you will. I agree. Bet, again, if, unless, unless you're going to be intel. Dude, if you got the fresh sign and the camera intel. If I the intel, I would go out in the mornings, but I'd, I'd, I'm hesitant to. I think I've I think I've blown more stuff up like you said over the years hunting those early season mornings, uh, and that wait. was back when it was even the fifteenth of October. I would almost wait until that third, third to fourth week, almost towards Halloween, before I really start hitting mornings. Week before Halloween, and you got to have a cold front, you know, to have that morning be worth it to punch into some of these spots. You're just gonna bump deer. Yeah. And just, again, just hunt it smart, guys. Again, it's not, and I know it goes by in a flash. You know, we all, we'll all we be saying this here, end of December, we'll be like, man, that season went quick. But My bank account's empty. It's yeah, Christmas. My bank account's empty. It's Christmas, guys. Hunting season and Christmas. Yeah. Um, but it, take your time with it. You know, don't just hunt your stand because it's your favorite stand. Hunt the stand because it's the right stand for that time of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, have multiple spots. Don't burn them out. Um. You know, we looked at a couple of spots where I remember when Nate was with me trimming them. I'm like, hey, dude, I haven't sat in this stand in like seven years. Nate's like, maybe it's time to sit in this stand again. I was like, you might be right. If I get the condition for it, you might be onto something with it. Mm-hmm. But that's why, you know, there's stands that I haven't sat in years that we go in and we trim them every year. And um, there's only been one or two stands that I've killed multiple bucks out of. You know, every other ones have been you know, different stands just because I, I spread out that pressure and I don't, um, I don't keep consistent with it. You know, I keep them, keep them guessing like I'm not hunting them. And that's kind of my advice is don't, don't burn out your best spot. Definitely don't burn out your best spots. If you're, like I said, sitting observation, sitting in an inside corner, you can get into and out over whatever. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, but yeah, Food source, definitely a good one. What's up? Did you mention? Nope, we didn't actually mention that. So with the good weather, we had a little bit of bumper crop this year on some of our fruit trees when we were driving around some of the field edges, the inside corners and stuff like that of our fields. Um, should have been on them a little bit better, looking at them a little closer. Uh, one of our pears absolutely destroyed itself because of how heavy it was. Snapped like... 50 60 percent of the branches out of it oh, wow. snapped them all out of it just loaded up dude other branches like hanging on the ground so we went over and dad and dad shook them off we were at first and mom's probably got i saw her in the side by side laughing me and dad are pulling pears off and throwing them up into the tree trying to knock pears off of the branches <laughs> and then at the end of it we just didn't say we can't throw like that anymore and i'm sitting there i'm just hanging off a couple and so we get back to side by side and the dad kind of looks at it Gets ready to start it, jumps off, goes over there, shit, shit out. Jumps, jumps like 50 out of it or whatever. I said, well, maybe that is one of them. Opening day. Yeah. But other than there's no stand within bones with that pear tree. But it's kind of around the top end of top field there. But yeah, the the like I said, if you have that that apple that drops right now, that pear, if you got something like a northern spy, um, some of those other apple varietals that are dropped right now, the kefir and airs pears, those were the ones that we were uh, shaking out today. Uh, mostly just to keep them from, you know, overloading and damaging themselves if we get some heavy wind and rain on them. Yeah. You know, we weren't having any intention to hunt all of them, but, um, yeah, we definitely got to do some serious trimming on those trees this year. But, yeah, fruit, if you got good hard mast right now, or soft mast and or hard mast, that's another spot that's that's absolutely... Um, key and checking them to make sure you don't get damage on them you know for sure so that's another good tip if you do have fruit trees out there especially younger ones that can't quite handle that extra load from having a bumper year like this you might want to check them and add it to that time where you just put out on the wheeler grab a couple cameras you know not doing too much invasive stuff and shake out a couple of those you know mass trees so you don't have some damage you know like i said that one pair is pretty Pretty hammered. It's missing a lot of branches, dude. So, yeah. 
I just cut the head off of it and you know start training it, pruning it. Yeah, it'll it'll we'll, well, it might not be the prettiest, but we'll make it look all right. We'll get it producing again. Deer don't care what it looks like. No, no. And like I said, there's going to be uh, probably sixty to eighty new pairs underneath it right now underneath those two trees that we shook out. So um, those trees are I don't know probably. 10, 10, 12 years old now. And I mean, we got probably 50, 60 pairs off of them. Mm -hmm. So um, it's actually right by that stand that's in that clump maple that we couldn't get out of the tree. Uh, that is just tricky to hunt that spot because of the way the wind is up there. So you kind of got to flank it like we set the other stand up for now. You either got to go way in the corner where I shot a hornet, or you got to go over by the ridge where we set the new stand. Mm -hmm. I can't sit that middle and split that ridge because the wind just doesn't cooperate for it. So, but again, now that we got those two spots there, you can kind of hunt either side with the wind um, and hunt the deer either coming up out of the bedding or coming down that ridge through the corner of that field toward those pear trees. You just can't hunt directly by the pear tree. But that doesn't mean we can't extend those pear trees toward you know the corner where I shot Hornet or put a couple in the dump maybe. Mm -hmm. But the dump's looking good, dude. That's, that's freaking popping up solid. Radish and clover money. There's no weed in it, like I said. <laughs> but the radish and clover, I'm glad I threw that in there, dude. So there's at least something, mm -hmm. you know, working in those fields. But I think it's a good place for it. Don't burn out your spots, guys. And uh, just remember, take just take your time, enjoy the season, and just be smart about it. Do everything with a purpose. And when in doubt, I always do say trust your gut with it. If you got a gut feeling with it, I'd roll with the gut feeling. You know, sometimes I've switched mid walk to a stand, gut feeling changed. Morning I killed outlaw was like that. I was going to go to the dump, but I was like, I got in there that morning. I didn't bump any deer getting to the stand before I dropped down to the dump. And I was like, I'm just going to continue down this ridge nice and easy. Slipped up in that stand, got into a bunch of deer because the wind worked for both spots that day. The one where you said that, how you hunt that stand? One with a platform stuck in the tree. Oh, <laughs> the ladder fell out of it. Yeah, That's the one I killed outlaw out of. And I slipped down to that stand because it was a gut feeling. I was going to go down to the dump. But instead of dropping down the hill, I was like, well, I didn't bump any deer, so I'm going to continue down the end. Bow hunt. Use previous year's camera data. That will tell you when and where to hunt certain spots. I feel like I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. I like that, Bo. Well, that's another good tip. We'll be also watching the, the one-year rule stuff um, for a couple deer. You know, We got a couple that me and Nate have talked about trying to target over at the farm. And uh, really, uh, we got a couple older age class deer that I'd like to get out of there and open up the space for some of these younger bucks to start slotting in. So I'm sure we'll be chasing them, dude. And we got the new camera arms to be doing some filming with it again, so that'll be cool too. So we'll be able to maybe give you guys some little teaser snips and stuff throughout the season. Which we did today. There might be a lot of... Uh... Ben did today. Yeah. Sorry. Didn't consult me on that. Spur of the moment, dude. It's a live show. I'm sorry. So, yep. And it might just be funny squirrel videos. Who knows? That's the kind of footage you're going to be getting. Don't expect a lot. Yeah. Set the bar low, so when we get just above that bar... Yeah, you guys, expectations. You guys are all about it. So, thank you guys for tuning in. If you liked it, jump over to the YouTube or like and subscribe to any of the channels or where you're watching this from. Let us know in the comments what you think of the episodes or what you'd like to see us talk about. Next week, the Just Hunt Club guys will be in on the show. Nate might be down, might not be down, but we're going to try to keep these cranking out every week for you guys now that it's season time. Try to stay on that the best we can. Um, keep giving you the real-time stuff on our sit alerts, what we're seeing for sign activity, everything like that to kind of give you guys the updates going through the season. So thank you all for tuning in, and we'll catch you all next time down here at the show with 100 Proof Whitetails. See you. See you later. Oh, yeah, good luck at shoot straight. Forgot to say that. <laughs>